What are some of the biggest mistakes that agencies make when it comes to their website? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hello everyone, I am Kyle Rackey and today we are talking about agency websites. What are some of the biggest mistakes that agencies make when it comes to their website? I'm going to walk through some specific examples of the good, the bad, and the ugly. What are people doing well? Uh, what are they not doing so well? And then you can use that information to hopefully learn from it and improve your own agency's website to use it as an actual business tool. Let's jump into the examples right now. And so the first one we're going to look at is mediaonmars.com.au. This is a site that is aesthetically pleasing uh, and has some kind of cool visual things going on. But the big problem here is there's no clear headline and no clear call to action. So you've got all these elements around the website, Mars Shop, celebrating 18 years in business, we love green jobs. Uh, this, what I assume is kind of a... Um, um, a video or something it's you've got this little blurb of text which is kind of long and I would I don't necessarily want to read that so there's nothing really that you can skim to say here's who we're about and where the right you know we could be the right fit for you contact us to learn more or even better go through an actual uh, lead magnet so they could do some things better here the next one we're gonna look at is a local company I know I'm gonna reload this the site because this is this is something that just breaks my heart, is to see what looks like a flash splash page. Um, I, it isn't actually done in flash, but it looks like it is. It's this kind of 3D graphic kind of thing, and it hits you with this loud noise as soon as you visit the website. See the world differently, but I don't really know who they are or what they're about. And it's just, you know, it goes into a carousel showing some of the upper management. As far as treating this like an actual business tool to get clients, this is this breaks a lot of rules and not in a good way, um, not in a groundbreaking way, but in a very old school, very classic, this is what you don't do anymore. So having loud images play as soon as you get to the site, having uh, big image carousels, um, having no clear headline or call to action like let's go places together read the press release why would i read a press release i don't even know who it is now this was actually an agency that merged with another agency but a new client comes to the website oh my god okay i'm gonna move on these guys uh make a, make some mistakes with this website now let's look at agencies trying to be too clever so here's an example of a kind of a cool looking site but again there's no clear headline of who they are or what they do now you see a modern design studio building brands products experiences okay that's kind of a headline it's very small compared to the rest of it so i'm not really sure where i'm supposed to look i can see that my mouse changes from an x to a, a circle so i don't really know what to do now because i'm a somewhat web savvy person I know you know I can kind of click on things and drag them around I see there's text behind here but I don't really know how to get at it without just dragging these things around I don't even know what the purpose of this text is if I can't actually read it um, this is a site that's trying to be visually uh, interesting and creatively clever and I think they do that but in terms of is this something that's going to draw a new potential client in I don't know and finally let's look at bad navigation so here's a company called studio rotate.com um, okay so their name is rotate and they've got this thing and okay I move my mouse over it and it does something it makes some visual effect but unless I really look and if I'm somebody who's maybe visually impaired I won't see this gray on gray menu button over here that this is how I actually go to look at other things. So if I click on about, we see, okay, rotate, we're here. There's not really any information. I close it, I go back to menu. Oh, look at that. The navigation is gone. It said menu, but I'm on close. So how do I actually get back to where I wanted to be? It sort of traps you down this rabbit hole that you can't get back. Oh, okay, I moved my mouse and now the rest of the navigation back came back. Wow, don't do this people. Okay. I've picked on these guys enough. Let's look at some uh, agencies that treat their website as an actual business tool. So there's Onboardly. 
And full disclosure, I do know uh, these examples of these good examples of websites. I actually know the founders and some of them are, are local to me. So I'm not just being nice to them because they're my friends, <laughs> but because they actually do a good job of promoting their agency. So what I love about what Onboardly does is you know right away when you come to the website that they're a PR agency for innovative companies on a mission to change the world. Okay, so if I'm a government agency or, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a kind of a, a, a boring company that's uh, that builds bilge pumps or make or manufactures bilge pumps probably not the company that I want to go to right so they're looking at startups and tech companies that are looking to get brand awareness I know instantly who they're trying to attract are you okay with your marketing efforts going on notice that they've got really good copy here and they've even well there's a little technical glitch there I think it's with that background video but leaving that aside one thing that they do really well here is that they have a lead magnet. So they've got this demand marketing guide that you put in your email address to get the guide and then they put you into a list, which is really nice. So you can actually learn more about what they do and they've got that free offer. So they do a really, really nice job of promoting themselves. And when you say show you how, where does that take you to their services? Cool. Here's another example of a company that does it well, which is Mindsee. So we deliver mobile app experiences that are planned, designed, and built to win. Find out how they can help. Okay, so you know instantly that they are a mobile app company. That's what they specialize in. They've got a little bit of supplementary copy that you can read to kind of look at, uh, you know, going from an app idea to launch shouldn't be painful. So they're addressing the reader's pain. Learn how we do it, which takes you to a really nice, strong uh, call to action, which is to start your blueprint. So this is a perfect example of a foot in the door offer. Get from a brainstorm to blueprint in as little as three weeks. So this is really nice. Not all clients are ready to jump into a giant, you know, expensive project with you. They pull you into this blueprint project and they, they um, promote it really nicely. And Mindsee actually has numerous lead magnets and foot in the door, um, tools here. So they've got start planning your app with the app design checklist. So this would be an example of a lead magnet because they're going to just send you this for free, but they get your information. It's very tailored to who their ideal client would be. And that differs from a foot in the door offer, which would be a paid project, but a, a small one that at least gets you in working with the client. They do that really, really nicely. Now, the other one that uh, does a nice job is Kula Partners. So what they do a nice job of is, again, the lead magnet. Download the Executive's Guide to Inbound Marketing, which is kind of the primary call to action. And then when you get in here, they talk about um, you know, this, this guide that they're going to give you. And they're using this as an actual tool to, to collect leads that are uh, targeted to who they want to work with. Very nice job of doing that. Okay, next we're going to look at websites that use very bland um, language. And I was actually guilty of this in the past when I ran an agency is I had a web, uh, I had a headline that I had written for our homepage and it was something, something like we build awesome websites. You see this a lot in the agency world, especially small web design agencies um, that talk about just being good. The reason this isn't very helpful for clients looking to hire you is because everybody says that they're good. So, uh, you know, just saying you do something good or it's high quality doesn't really mean anything. You have to show, not tell. So here's some examples of where we see we turn good ideas into great products. Okay, that's good. Um, and then you see other ones like this that are very uh, location focused. So August Interactive is a full service website design and development agency based in Baltimore, Maryland. Well, what does that really tell you? It, so they only want to work with people apparently that um, live in their area in Baltimore. Maybe, I don't know. Um, this is something where they could talk more to the, the client's pain and struggle and how they can help and how they're unique. This is, we are design and technology studio based in Los Angeles. Okay, great. Um, doesn't again tell you very much. And a creative agency, design, web, marketing video, super generic. There's also uh, agency examples of, uh, I'm going to blow past that one and jump into this one, where an integrated studio that uses design, film, and technology to help clients succeed in culture. 
Here's an example where some agencies are a little bit self-indulgent when they talk and uh, speak in a bit of jargon. So everybody talks about culture, and culture has different meanings. So saying that your technology client helps your clients succeed in culture doesn't really mean anything, does it? I don't know what that means. This is where, you know, if, if the clients were looking for an agency to help them with their culture, that might make sense. But I don't really understand how a, a new potential lead is coming here saying, I want an agency to help me succeed in my culture. It's very bizarre. Okay, let's look at some examples of agencies that do it well. I've already used these guys before, but I'm going to use them again. We deliver mobile app experiences that are planned, designed, and built to win. So this is a better uh, example of a headline because, it, again, it addresses pain. It's like when you are planning a mobile app or thinking about building a mobile app, you don't want it to fall flat. You don't want it to just be a fart in a windstorm, right? You want to win. So this is they're not just saying we're going to build you a mobile app. They're saying we're going to help you build it to win which is really good. And then this one is nice because it addresses a specific buyer. So industrial strength marketing is an agency that helps um, uh, manufacturing and industrial type of, of companies. And the image on the homepage speaks to that. Marketing for industrials, experience full service, no excuses, pull no punches, industrial strategy, unapologetically, uh, unapologetically industrial. And they say they are good for manufacturers, distributors, logistics companies. This is so great because they're marketing to one group, one individual, not not everyone. They're not just saying we're a marketing company. They're saying we are a marketing company that knows your industry inside and out. Perfect example of that. Next, we're going to focus purely on looks. So a mistake that a lot of agencies make, I think, is that they kind of undersell themselves in terms of their visual design because when you come to an agency especially one that uh, is a design company i think most agencies are going to have some kind of design talent in-house um, or at le the very least if they're marketing or their pr they're going to have some understanding of how design influences communications and marketing and yet so many of them create sites that are um, they look like every other website so here is a, a, a website where I think it's called Folk, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but um, it looks really nice, right? It's good typography, it's well designed, but unfortunately it just looks like every other website out there. There's nothing unique about it. The big, the large video background, the slightly darkened so they can put reverse text on it. You scroll down, you get, you know, big sans serif type. Um, you know, you get more big images with the logos reversed over top. Like it just looks like every other website. It's not a bad website. It looks good, but it's cookie cutter. And if you're an agency, why not try to stand out and look different? <clears throat> Here's another example of a web, a website for an agency that does the big dark background, the reverse text. Um, and then, you know, again, nice looking website, but looks like everyone else. And then let's look at some examples of agencies that are uh, kind of cool. And even some of the bad examples that we looked at in uh, earlier in the video, um, some of them are actually visually really cool, right? So this this is one that you know definitely looks different. Uh, I don't know exactly who it's for because I can't read. I think it's in Portuguese, um, but you know it's got a a, a constrained color palette. Um, because it's using this big um, navy type of color and then using those little splashes of color selectively. And as you go down, it's kind of bringing that down to even a two color type of thing with only the splashes of color being used in the illustrations. Um, it's a different kind of look that you don't see that often. And then this one is also uh, kind of cool, method.digital. And they're using the duotone type of image. Uh, so I think restraining their color palette and using typography, like in this case, they're using all caps italics is kind of cool because you don't see that a whole lot used on websites. Um, and then as you go down, you can kind of see that the way they use the photography with the duotones, the typography on top of it, the restrained color palette, it's a very um, interesting kind of look that you know you, not every agency has. I think they're making some mistakes here where again they're not really using like a great headline or a clear call to action 
but in terms of just purely aesthetics, they do a really nice job. Finally, let's look at the portfolio and the mistake that a lot of agencies make with their portfolio. Showing your work is important. Using case studies effectively is important because you're kind of showing the end product for potential clients. They can get a sense of your style. What does the you know end product look like that past clients have, uh, have seen? And so it gives them some idea of what they're getting into when they hire you, what you're capable of. But then you've got uh, agencies that might be really good in, in other ways, like Verb is an agency that focuses purely on the travel and tourism space. And they're, they're an incredible company. I know the founder, I know a lot of the people that work there, and they're a, a, a good company that does a lot of things right. One of the things they don't do very well, I think, is show their work. So here what they do is they show some examples of their work in this case, you can kind of see there's a, a mobile app. You can kind of see that. Everything else looks like it's just using stock photography and their logo. And then when you click on it, it actually pops open a new URL and just goes straight to the website. So it doesn't give you any kind of insight into what was the goal. Who were they, you know, what were they trying to accomplish with the work? Um, it's just straight to a URL. And the danger here is that sometimes clients will just change a website after after a little while, maybe they'll use another agency. And if you're just going straight to the URL, that might not even be the actual website that you designed. So I think that that's uh, a little bit of a trap. Uh, let's look at this one, awesomeco.uk. They do a similar thing, except at least instead of going right to a URL, they pop it open into a modal window, which I think is better, but still it doesn't really tell you any uh, anything about what they did, why they did it, what the, were they trying to solve, um, or any insight into the process, which is, I think, what clients want to see in addition to the results that it got them. Let's look at companies, two companies that do this extremely well. This is uh, Vidget.com. And they are, I, I've always enjoyed uh, looking at their work. I think they're a great agency. I've kind of kept tabs on them over the years. And when you look at their work, so they've worked with uh, LeBron, uh, they've worked with ESPN rather, World Wildlife Fund. They've worked with some really big brands, NBC, um, you know, really kind of notable organizations that they've worked with. But the one thing that I love about it is that when you click on a case study, it really walks you through the whole um, the whole story of what they did and why and how. And they almost treat each work sample like it's its own website, its own kind of microsite. So when you go here, they talk about uh, kind of the background of the project and what the challenge was, the solution, the results. And then as you go through, they show you kind of the execution and you can kind of see bits of the website they worked on, how they did it. So they even show you little snippets of the um, uh, the sketches, the concepts, uh, what they use to collaborate with the client, um, some of the photography that they uh, either did or they were working with. They really show you uh, how they put, you know, how they put it all together. If you're a client looking at this, you get a very good sense of what it's like working with Fidget. Love how they do that. I recommend going to their work section and just kind of pouring through their case studies because it's done so well. <clears throat> Another company that does this well is Focus, L Focus Lab LLC. Okay, sorry, misread that URL. They do a similar thing where when you click on a, cl a project, it takes you through the challenge. It shows you what services they provided, their approach, um, it kind of shows you little bits of, you know, the team working on the project, all the examples of work they didn't use, because sometimes clients don't realize that the end product isn't, they didn't just arrive at that solution in a straight line. It was a journey to get there and what that journey looked like. So I think they do an incredible job of showing that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those teardowns. Just to recap on what we learned was using your agency website as a, a tool to generate leads. So you, having clear headlines, calls to action, lead magnets, um, foot in the door offers, things that are actually gonna get leads in the door is incredibly important. Secondly, not making the copy too bland or generic or uh, self-indulgent, you know, making really 
great copy that speaks to the, the visitor's pain, also important. Uh, third, making sure the design isn't cookie cutter. You know, it doesn't look like a WordPress theme. It looks like something that really stands out and shows what you can do as an agency. And finally, making sure your portfolio really tells a story, right? It walks through how you, how you made the donuts. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please share it. Also be sure to hit that subscribe button and also sign up to our email list. You're gonna get more videos like this and I wanna hear from you what else you would like to have us cover in this series. Thank you so much for watching.